on Sunday, December 15, 1996, in Willingboro, New Jersey, 12-year-old Selena Mays was home preparing for bed and spending what we now know is her last moments on record. Just hours before, she attended church, had ice cream with her family, then went to bed around 11 p.m. Selena was an expectant mother, being nine months pregnant. She was due in only two weeks. In just her 12 years, Selena had a complicated life. Her family structure was curated in a way where she had very little access to the outside world, making this case narrow down to those in her small circle. One out of the many elements in her case that was strange is the last word she said to a relative before she went to bed. Though it may mean something or all of nothing, it is important to note. It leaves people wondering if she chose to leave and disappear because of her circumstances or did someone make her disappear? Was someone harboring a secret, a family secret? I would describe this case as convoluted layered and protected, you will soon find that this case has three sides to it, what the public knows and what was done in secret, then the truth. So what happened to Selena on the late evening or early morning of December 16, 1996? Could it be that she up and left while pregnant or is her disappearance connected to someone else? Possibly a secret, a family secret or a cult. This is the Missing Found Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Harlow. Before we get into the case, I have a few details to share about the show. The Missing Found is an investigative true crime podcast focusing mainly on unsolved missing person cases in the Black community. The cases that I cover have either gone cold, have little to no media coverage, or have gone without conclusion. You can follow the show on Instagram at The Missing Found or on Medium at The Missing Found to read our original script. I also would like to mention that we have a case suggestion form in the show notes or description box that you can complete to submit your case suggestions that are of the Black and Missing. We also have a Patreon that's now available for you to become a member in our private community to discuss cases deeper beyond our case analyses through private discussions with me, ad-free episodes, gain complimentary access to our original script, early releases, bonus content, and much more that's exclusive for members only. The show is now available on all major podcast platforms, including Apple, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Please be sure to give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcast. To access all things of The Missing Found, you can visit our website, themissingfound.com. I ask that you please like, share, subscribe, and comment to share your thoughts on this case. This is Case Episode 16, The Disappearance of Selena Mays. Today we're analyzing the disappearance of Selena Mays. Selena went missing in Willingboro, New Jersey. A 12-year-old being pregnant is astronomical, but that element may very well tie into why Selena disappeared. Everyone has secrets, but what do you do when you're the one involved in a secret that you have no control over? What if your situation is the secret of someone else? We're going to offer a fresh look at the case details and examine what has publicly been shared, trace Selena's last known steps of what has been told by those closest to her, then finally break down every detail, the secrets, then close with my opinion. This case is a convoluted one, and in my opinion, riddled with falsities due to those protecting the case, even decades later. We know things like this just don't happen. Someone had a hand in this. I believe this case goes deeper than surface level, which could be why it has been cold for 27 years. When you have rumors that involve cults and family secrets, it can become perplexing. Unlike with most cases that I've covered, Selena's disappearance did receive ample coverage, and there is information on the case. But what can you do when the details may not even be the truth? So who is Selena Mays? Selena Jeanette Mays was born on May 28, 1984 in Miami, Florida, to her parents Crisanzo Mays, which we will refer to as CJ, 
and Lynn Vitale. Two years after Selena was born, in 1986, they relocated to Palmyra, New Jersey to start anew. Selena was born into a complicated situation because her father, CJ, had a drug and alcohol addiction with a record of domestic violence, and her mother, Lynn, was an exotic dancer and also had a drug addiction. According to articles, there may have been some domestic violence between the two. Though never married, Selena's parents ended up separating and they went through a tumultuous custody battle, leaving Lynn to be a single mother raising her daughter on her own. Eventually, Lynn got herself sober and found a job as a school custodian in Palmyra. Things were going well for the small family. Lynn was working and providing for her child, and Selena was doing well in school and made friends in the process. CJ ended up relocating just nine miles away to move in with relatives in Willingboro, New Jersey, and became a radical Christian under his sister, Reverend Sarita Smith's Church, Gospel of Christ Ministries. CJ dedicated most of his time to the church by working as the accountant and committed member of the congregation. Lynn did not allow CJ access to Selena, though those reasons why are just not known. CJ has alluded to the family not being accepting of him because he was black. Then, some have alluded to it being about the church. Just eight years after moving to New Jersey, Lynn died of an aneurysm in 1994. At this time, Selena was only 10 years old. Before we get into the case details, I want to first go over the names that will be mentioned throughout the analysis. Lynn Vitale, Selena's mother. Crisanzo C.J. Mays, Selena's father. Reverend Sarita Smith, Selena's aunt and pastor to Gospel of Christ Ministries. Yvette Mays, mother to Nori and wife to C.J. Noriel or Nori Mays, Selena's half-sister. Sean Smith, Selena's older cousin and son of Sarita Smith. Tawana, Selena's friend that was also a member of the church and lived in the communal Crestview residence. Bob Bonaggio, Selena's half-brother. The case details. This case I will present a little different because in order to understand what may have happened to Selena and possibly why, we must first understand what led up to that, which is why we may be 27 years in without any answers and have a case that is growing cold year after year. Then also discuss recounts from others closer to her that share their side. We're analyzing a case where there are secrets, lots of them. The custody battle. Once Lynn passed away, Selena lived with her maternal relatives. As I'm sure you could imagine, this was all very painful for Selena. At age 10, this is the age you develop strong relationships. You start puberty, develop complex feelings, socializing, and tend to absorb information at a more rapid pace. Selena was at a pivotal time in her life, and then her mother died. Though not publicly mentioned, I can assume that this not only put a strain on her mentally, but it could have strongly impacted her development. Selena had to deal with the passing of her mother and the back and forth between her maternal and paternal family to gain custody of her. CJ told the courts that he became sober with no more domestic abuse, drug and alcohol addiction, got married and found religion at Gospel of Christ Ministries in Mount Holly, New Jersey. For his betterment, making him more of an ideal and fit parent and guardian of 10-year-old Selena instead of her maternal family. CJ ended up winning the battle and gaining full custody of Selena. You will soon see that this was a decision that caused total transformation and 27 years of mystery, directly or indirectly. The Living Arrangements Selena ended up moving into the communal family home with CJ, several of his family members, and where some of the church members live. As mentioned, CJ had full custody of her, so this is where she would spend all of her time. On In Pursuit with John Walsh, Nori, Selena's paternal half-sister, stated that several of their relatives lived in the home. Some of the relatives were Nori, Selena, CJ, CJ's wife Yvette, Sarita, Sarita's husband, and Sean Smith, Sarita's son. 
CJ pulled Selena out of the New Jersey public school system and transitioned her to be homeschooled at the church, focusing heavily on the teachings of the church, religion, and limiting her social interactions with people who weren't members, the outside world. The Crestview Residence The communal home in which Selena stayed in was a modest ranch-style home in a middle-class community located in Willingboro, New Jersey. I was able to view the interior layout of the home. The home, at the time, featured two stories, had four bedrooms and three bathrooms. The home had the primary bathroom and ensuite on the main level and three bedrooms on the upper level. From what I can see, there appeared to be three entrances and exits out of the home the front door, the sliding glass doors that lead to the backyard, and a door that also leads to the backyard or the side from the laundry room. It is believed that between 12 and 15 people were occupying the home in December 1996. Now, I want to transition to Gospel of Christ Ministries. Church or Cult Gospel of Christ Ministries is located in Mount Holly, New Jersey. It operated for several years under the instruction of Reverend Sarita Smith. Gospel of Christ Ministries was a small Pentecostal church located in Mount Holly, New Jersey, that was led by Reverend Sarita Smith, Selena's paternal aunt and CJ's sister. Church was every Sunday, and it was an all-day experience. The congregation consisted of around 50 to 60 devoted members that were mainly extended families, and everyone was somehow connected. The church was a tight-knit community, extremely devoted and structured. Most of the members not only worshipped at the church but worked there or supported the congregation financially, socialized with strictly only the members within, their children were homeschooled there, and most of the members lived in homes in the old church rectory that were affiliated with the church, whereas dozens would live under one roof. The communal home in which Selena occupied had around 15 people living there. Amongst those occupants, There were Sarita, her husband, five of their children, grandchildren, and even members who were not blood-related, but a part of the congregation. This element is important, so I want you to remember this. Everything that went on in the lives of the members, inside and outside of the church doors, Reverend Sarita Smith had to have knowledge of it, and it required consent from her. Sarita spareheaded the congregation and her family, and they essentially did any and everything she told them to do. From what I've researched, this church had its share of complaints and past experiences shared from former members, and I will go further into this later into the analysis. The Unfound Pregnancy At this time, Selena was under strict rules with a limited social life than what she was used to. It was home, church, and school at the church. That's it. Outside of the doors of Gospel of Christ Ministries, it was a different world, a world that she was not privy to and denied access. At age 11, a few months up to a year of living with her father and the rest of her paternal family, Selena became pregnant. This is where the mystery starts. When she got pregnant, she was scolded for it at church and at home, which was not surprising since this was a common practice there by calling out sinners in a public format. The family claimed they did everything to try to find out who the father was of Selena's child. So they claim. But she always said that it was a 16-year-old boy who was not a member of the church, and she met him at a Camden, New Jersey skating rink. She never provided any other information than that. Selena made sure to take her prenatal vitamins. She attended all of her doctor's appointments with her obstetrician, Her obstetrician claimed that Selena never shared the true identity of the father to her either. We will later find out that she may have confided in someone at one point and communicated the true identity of the father. As we know, a child cannot consent to sex at age 11. This was a S.A. Selena was S.A. and impregnated sometime in March 1996, right before her 12th birthday in May. She was set to give birth at age 12, with a due date of December 29, 1996, two weeks before she went missing. Now, this was not a welcome pregnancy due to her age. This was an R that resulted in a pregnancy. It resulted in a secret that she held to keep someone else from getting into trouble and public shunning, which 
is what she endured. Thanks for everything. On Sunday, December 15th, 1996, Selena and her family all attended church service that morning into the afternoon. Oddly, evening service was canceled. The family came home, ate dinner, and had ice cream for dessert. Now, it is not clear what the exact timeline was on this day or if any of this is confirmed, except for only recounts from the family. After ice cream, Selena placed her dishes in the sink, kissed everyone goodnight, then said thanks for everything, and then went upstairs to what we can only assume is to go to bed. This was the last time anyone has said to have seen Selena Jeanette Mays on record. Breakfast time. On early Monday morning, on December 16th, the next day, Yvette, Selena's stepmother, wife to CJ and mother to Nori, who was four at the time, has started making breakfast. Nori recounts on the Here and Now show on ABC7 that her mom was in the kitchen making pancakes or cinnamon rice for breakfast. Yvette had asked Nori to go upstairs and get Selena so she can come and eat breakfast. Nori recalls herself going up to Selena's bedroom, opening the door, and telling her to come down to eat breakfast. Selena did not come down. Nori's mom, Yvette, made her go back up to get her. Nori goes back upstairs to get Selena. Still no answer when she calls her name. She pulls back the covers and sees pillows that were made to look like a body, and no Selena. Nori goes back down and informs her mother that she is not in her room. Yvette then calls CJ, who was at the church in Mount Holly, and lets him know that Selena is not in her room and asks if she's with him. At this time, no one reports 12-year-old Selena missing until the next day. Tuesday, December 17th. CJ then goes to the police station and reports his daughter missing. Police thought it was odd that the father of a missing child would come to the station in person to report his daughter missing. CJ mentioned that it was in God's hands. Now what CJ failed to report is that his daughter was not only missing, but nine months pregnant. This was mentioned days later. From here, the search began for Selena. As Nori recounts, it was all a blur, mainly because of her age since she was only four at the time, and she remembers seeing police at her home. She does not remember much after that because she explained that she and other family members and the congregation were shielded from a lot during that time, so she did not wholly understand all of what was going on. She didn't understand the magnitude of Selena no longer being there, or that she was what we now know her as an endangered missing person. Nori recalls Selena not being talked about or mentioned much after her disappearance. At age eight, she said that she would ask questions but never really received any real answers. There were even some opportunities to speak with the media, but Sarita denied them access. She does remember someone telling her at that age that the reason Selena was not there is because Selena slept around, got pregnant, and ran away. This is where we are left with 27 years of mystery, unanswered questions, and uncertainty. Now that we've broken down the public case details, we're going to analyze this further and fill in some of the gaps. We're going to break down some of the details that no one likes to talk about, the things that happen in secret and private. These details, just like with every case, are alleged. Let's go back some and start from the very beginning. The church. Now, the church received a number of complaints from neighbors for being too loud. Sarita called war on Mount Holly and family members of members of the church going there to physically remove their loved ones. There was controversy later where past members recalled the church being isolated and cult-like due to Sarita's brainwashing techniques she would use on her congregation. The congregation, from adults to children, lived and breathed Gospel of Christ ministries. With that, Selena lived a tremendously sheltered life where she had very little to no access to non-members or just the world in general. This new lifestyle was an adjustment for Selena, as it was vastly different than how she lived with her mother, Lynn. Selena confided in someone. Selena became close with one of the female members that lived in the house, Tawana. Tawana was just a few years older than Selena, and she was a member of the church through her mother. Her mother was going through a difficult period in her life, 
and Tawana's mother confided in Sarita, and she opened the invitation to allow Tawana to stay with them at the Crestview residence. Tawana and Selena were typically placed in the same group when they would go do fundraisers at the church. According to the Messenger Press, the girls, including other members, would go to local stores and sell soft pretzels, cakes, pies, and Mary Kay products. This was how members supported the church to partake financially in the ministry and aid others in the community, according to CJ. Members were told that giving money to the church is based on morality, with some donating their life savings. Oftentimes, members would be on their designated sites from 8 a.m. to 1 a.m. soliciting for sales. Selena started her menstrual cycle around fall of 1995, and Tawana would often check in on her to make sure she had all of her feminine hygiene products to care for herself during her time of the month. In May 1996, Tawana asked if she needed any products, and Selena replied no. Tawana asked again sometime later, and Selena again said no. I guess this new reality set in, and Selena confided in Tawana and that she may be pregnant. This information that she shared was alarming because she said that her cousin, 21-year-old Sean Smith, Sarita's son, had got her pregnant. Sean was a self-employed music producer and worked at a local security company. Because of his possible connects, Selena had a favorite artist and said that Sean had promised her an autograph ticket, and in order to get them, she would have to perform different acts, which was to have her engage in sexual acts with him, which is what I identify as R at her age. This was not only the first and last time, but there were a few other instances where Sean would do this to her. Tawana hearing this was not surprised because she also made a startling mention that she too was essayed by Sean starting at age 13, and he even had her get an abortion. Tawana went into great detail about how Sean would enter into the room at night and take advantage of her, similar to the experience Selena claimed to have had with Sean. Tawana never told a soul because she was afraid of being publicly shamed in front of the church, despite Sean being a predator. Soon after, Selena's family noticed her growing belly and had her take a pregnancy test at a local clinic. This test was given under a different name to conceal her identity. Selena's test came back positive. Selena, a 12-year-old child, carrying a child. I say this because it's not her fault. She was taken advantage of by someone who she trusted, possibly her own cousin, according to accounts from Tawana. It has been said that Selena did, in fact, tell her family that it was Sean who assaulted her. Just as you thought, Sean denied it. Sean was married, but prior to his marriage, he had children with two other women who were members of the church, including his wife, while Selena was pregnant as well as another unidentified person in the Crestview home. As months go on, Selena came to the conclusion that this was her unfortunate reality, with the lack of help from her family. She continued attending her doctor appointments and took her prenatal vitamins. It was said that she was even choosing baby names and was gifted a diaper bag that she loved and hid to avoid her housemates and family members from seeing it. This was a bag Tawana gifted to her. Despite all of this, her family refused to buy her clothes that were fitting for her growing figure. It seemed as if her family cared more about how it looked and shunning her instead of who did that to her. Her world was small, so whoever responsible couldn't be too far away. Try to find out who the father of her baby was, but she always told her that he was 16 and not a member of the church which is the same story that was communicated to media and amongst the congregation. I will go into why this just isn't possible, in my opinion. Selena's due date was set for December 29, 1996, as I've stated, and she required a C-section because her pelvis was too small to birth a baby at her age. She would not have been able to give birth naturally. If she ran off on her own, that she would not have gotten very far, mainly because she was nine months pregnant and required a hospital to give birth to perform a C-section. The search. The search efforts were limited. 
I say it was limited because Selena was reported missing a day after her alleged disappearance. Her father, CJ, instead of calling, walked into the police department and said that he wanted to report his daughter missing. Now, this is a typical because typically families would call into the department instead of actually walking in to report it. He stated that her daughter's disappearance is in God's hands. Now, one thing that was vital that he failed to mention was that Selena was not only a missing 12-year-old, but she was also nine months pregnant. This was mentioned days later into the search. This detail is transformative because it can give a motive and possibilities into who's involved. Expectant mothers are at a high risk of going missing from the father of the child. This opens up many doors. The only thing is, the only thing is, the family claimed to not know who the unborn child's father was, except for what they claimed was communicated by Selena. It also makes you wonder, why did CJ not share this information? When searching for your child or any loved one, you would want to share all of the details. His reasoning could be because the investigation may take a turn due to a 12-year-old child being pregnant, so there must be something going on at the home and would make CJ appear in a different light. We may never know why this information was not shared initially, but it is strange. That alone would make law enforcement want to find her since this is a risky situation since she is near full term and expected to give birth any day. And because they would want to speak with her to explain her pregnancy because this is technically an R because a child cannot consent. CJ was at one point looked at as being the father of her child, but he proved that he had a vasectomy a few years prior. We know that it is possible for vasectomies to be reversed, but his doctor proved his statement to be true. CJ informed law enforcement that he told Selena that once her baby was born, that he would get a blood test to reveal the true identity of the father. The only thing is, we know that this is partially untrue because in order for the identity of the father to be revealed, a potential father would need to be present. Selena may not have known this information, or this may have been a question she asked her doctor. This information we just don't know. Law enforcement did search and there was significant news coverage on her disappearance, but it turned up nothing. Hospitals were checked to see if anyone who fit Selena's description was admitted, and that also turned up nothing. Where could she have gone in a matter of hours? A child. There were several newspaper articles on her disappearance and the happenings at the church. The search was not as in-depth as it should have been, as there were two vital areas that were not properly searched, the Crestview residence and the church. There was some talk that there was no search there because Sarita would not allow it, and would not allow her congregation to speak to law enforcement. Now, Sean was eventually questioned and swore that he did not have anything to do with Selena's disappearance. There has been a long-standing rumor that suggested that Selena's disappearance was related to the cult-like church, Gospel of Christ Ministries. Though a rumor, there has been nothing to suggest that, not that we know of. Selena's case, according to CJ, is all about Selena ran out of fear with the focal point being the child's father. He felt that Selena decided to run off by herself with someone to avoid the true identity being exposed. Sarita was more concerned about the reputation of her church than finding Selena. We have quotes from Sarita that she said on the pulpit during a service after Selena went missing. Quote, 12 years old is just a number. Some 12-year-olds make you think they're 18 years old. End quote. Also during her service, she mentioned, quote, I have no fear what God has chosen, and I don't fear where Selena is, end quote. Furthermore, Sarita shared how she had an inkling that something was going on with Selena. She mentioned how Selena lied all throughout her pregnancy and how evil and perverse Selena's generation is. If that isn't the most vile thing an aunt can say about her missing niece, who is also a reverend, then I don't know what is. The Charges On Thursday, January 29, 1998, Sarita's son, 23-year-old Sean Smith, was arrested on essay charges. He essayed two girls starting at age 13 and 14. The first victim he assaulted from 1992 to 1994, and the second victim was from 1993 to 1995. 
In the midst of this, he fathered five children by four different mothers, which most, if not all, being members of the church. It is also not clear if the children he fathered were from underage girls. Police had declined to comment on if these cases were in connection to Selena's disappearance. Theories There are some theories that have been mentioned throughout the years. Theory 1. Selena ran off with the boyfriend or baby's father. This one is still a possibility, but least likely in my opinion. I say this because I don't believe she had a boyfriend, nor do I believe her baby's father was someone outside of the church or family. If she did sneak out of the home, out of any of the doors on that late evening, early morning, then someone would have heard something. She was nine months pregnant, was two weeks away from giving birth, and she had to have a C-section. Hospitals were checked and there was no record of Selena or anyone fitting her description giving birth at any nearby hospitals. Theory 2. CJ has her stash somewhere to hide her. This has been a theory from some sleuths online and I've also seen it in media. I don't believe he placed Selena anywhere. CJ was very committed to the church and was adamant on telling Selena that he will get a blood test done to see who the father is. I don't have much evidence or reasoning behind why this is, but I think it's least likely. For this length of time, I doubt he was hiding her. And if so, where is she today? And what was he or would be hiding her from? Everyone knew she was pregnant. It was no secret. He wanted to know who the father was. Is this theory possible? Yes. We can't rule it out, but I just don't see this happening and being successful. Theory 3. Selena ran off to prevent getting a blood test to reveal who's the child's father. This theory ties into the previous theory. Selena was approaching giving birth and I know she may have been nervous because of the circumstance. Selena was 12. She was experiencing a lot. The loss of her mother, the essay, the pregnancy, church, her life transitioning from what she was familiar with to a life under strict church guidelines, and only God knows what else. If you remember, Tawana said that Selena did actually tell her family who the father was, Sean. However, her family said that she said it was a 16-year-old boy. Sarita was heavily involved with the church and everything that happened within those parameters and outside of it. If anyone needed to know who the father was, it would have been Sarita. I'm not giving Sarita any power, but the way she operated her congregation and family, I find it hard to believe she did not know. Theory 4. Selena went into labor and something happened. There is a possibility that Selena went into labor earlier than what she was supposed to at home. Something happened to Selena and the baby, and she was disposed of. This is never a picture I would want to paint, ever. But it is a reality of possibilities. If this did happen, then there would be no reason to harm her or the baby. Unless there is something else. I do wonder, was her food or the ice cream she had for dessert tainted to force her into labor or harm? What would be the reason to force her into labor? Theory 5. She ran off on her own for unknown reasoning. Selena could have just decided she no longer wanted to deal with the scrutiny. It was getting close to her due date and she just wanted something different. I still always go back to why didn't anyone hear her? Unless someone helped her escape and leave the environment. High possibility. I don't believe she left on her own because as far as we know, she was reliant on her family. She was only 12. If she was running away or planning to, she would have had to run to something. The question is, who or what was she running to? This all was foreign territory to her. A 12-year-old that's under these circumstances is just not going to leave home blindly into the darkness. The question is, does her family know she left? Or is this what they believe or want others to believe? It's difficult to sneak out of a home that over a dozen people live in. Our last theory, theory six. Someone or some people cause harm to Selena. This theory is one you would naturally consider because of everything we've learned. 
Even old church members have said that they feel her disappearance is somehow tied to the church. What I don't know is how and in what way. Some of the members say they feel they were brainwashed. This can allude to someone possibly being involved in the church, a family member who was a member of the church, or a church member unrelated to the family. Who would want to make Selena disappear? My belief is someone who wanted to conceal a secret. My opinion. This case took me some time to cover because of how many people are involved, the secrets, and the fact that there are so many details on the case, but yet I believe there is something missing. The truth. With a case as convoluted as this one, I was reading an article archive and came across a recount from Selena's half-brother, Bob Bonaggio. Bob recounted how one day Selena was speaking to him on the phone. He then heard CJ in the background telling Selena to get off the phone. Before she hung up, he asked her to press a button if she was unhappy living with her father. Selena pressed a button. This was shortly before she disappeared and the call was brief since she was told to get off the phone. When I start from the top and look at her pregnancy, we know that this occurred when she was 11 and was pregnant into age 12. Tawana recalls Selena telling people it was Sean who was the father, but the family states that Selena did not share who the father was. I thought this was odd because everything they did revolved around the church. She did not have much interaction with the outside world, enough to run off with someone for a moment. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible, but when you look at the wording, it makes you question everything about the statement. Quote, he is 16 and not a member of the church. End quote. It just sounds very specific to indirectly separate the predator from Selena, specifically pointing out that the father has no ties to the church, to ultimately protect the church, which was Sarita's main goal, seemingly, than finding her niece. Selena was living under the same roof as a predator, Sarita's son, Sean. We know that to be true since he was formally arrested and charged with essay for two teen girls. Can we assume or suggest that he may be involved with Selena's pregnancy? Sure. We just don't have physical evidence. As of today, Sean has not been found guilty of any crime associated with Selena. Selena getting pregnant by someone she met at a skating rink, in my opinion, is least likely. I'm not denying that they went to a skating rink, but Selena was monitored and limited to just the church. When would time allow for this to be done? This is why I believe whoever responsible for impregnating Selena is someone more closer in her small circle, which then transitions to a possible motive. Who would want to get rid of Selena? My first guess is whoever assaulted her and impregnated her. The thing is, we don't know who that may be, whether it was a 16-year-old at the skating rink or someone closer someone in the church or in the house. We just don't know. When you look at the possible motives, you then think about what if she possibly ran away, but ran from what? Why would Selena run? She was set to give birth in just two weeks. If she ran, why did she not take her personal belongings? It was said that her purse, beloved CD player, prenatal vitamins were all left behind but her long red coat was gone, which is assumingly the coat she wore to further push the, quote, why did Selena run theory. If she wanted to run, why didn't she sooner? That statement really does not hold much weight because people leave their lives at any time. There is no right time. But we have to remember that this is a 12-year-old we're talking about. A 12-year-old that has not reached a high level of maturity even though her obstetrician referred to Selena as being emotionally mature, whatever that means or alludes to. It was a cold, dark December evening in New Jersey. The weather was 41 degrees outside on December 15, 1996, at around 11 p.m., and stayed the same into the early morning of December 16. That's weather that a child who was nine months pregnant would not have been able to withstand on her own. I'm not sure if I believe a child walked out of her home and into the darkness without being seen, heard, nor any of the family members being up at that hour to possibly see her. There were dozens of family members in the home, and no one seen her or heard her leave? 
I find that hard to believe unless everyone went to bed at the same time, which I don't believe to be true. This was a two-story ranch style home with four bedrooms and three bathrooms at the time. It seemed like some of the residents shared a room, so someone would have had to hear or see something. If that part of the story is true with the dessert, could possibly something have happened to her ice cream? Could it have been tainted? Could there have been something put in it to force her into labor and something happened, purposefully? We know that Sarita had her choice of words for Selena and the pregnancy with seemingly blaming her. We just don't know to what extent someone would go to harm Selena if she didn't run on her own. I don't have a timeline because I can't be for certain that Selena actually disappeared on the evening of December 15th or sometime in the early morning of December 16th. We never learned why the evening service at the church was canceled. Now this could mean something or nothing. Selena had a complicated life. I don't know whatever became of Selena and her child. There has been finger pointing from both sides of the families. Selena's maternal side and her paternal side. The paternal side thinks her maternal relatives came to get her and is hiding her. Then you have her maternal side believing that the church and the Smith Mays families are responsible. We don't know what Selena's frame of mind was at that time, but we can assume she was dealing with a lot given her situation. Could Selena have orchestrated her own disappearance or worked with someone to get out of her situation? Possibly. But if this were true, she would have needed help. So who helped her, if that is the case? Even Nori, Selena's half-sister, accounts could be skewed. She was only four when this occurred. We don't know if Nori's recounts are from her memory or what was told to her and it unknowingly became her memory. I believe that the condition of her bed in the story was created to set the stage of Selena running away. Someone in her small circle holds the answers to her whereabouts. The thing about this case is, well, those who may hold the answers are all now deceased. CJ, Sarita, and Sean, dead. CJ passed away on September 29, 2017, at the age of 65. Sarita passed away on May 3, 2018 at the age of 65. And Sean passed away on August 3, 2020 at the age of 46. Gospel of Christ Ministries in Mount Holly is now defunct and no longer in service. The building today sits vacant. Whoever responsible, I do believe it was someone close. I don't believe Selena just left on her own volition. She had help in one of many ways. Those that were close to the case are no longer here, but I believe there are multiple people who know exactly what happened and where Selena is today if she is still out there with her child. All that is left is mystery, hope, and kept secrets. Until those closest to the Mays family starts talking, the congregation of past members, and whoever holds the key information, this case will remain unsolved, open, and vastly cold. Someone had a secret to hide, and I believe Selena was carrying it. At the time of Selena's disappearance, she was 12 years old, stood at 5 feet, and weighed 120 pounds. Selena is a female, biracial, African-American and Caucasian, has brown eyes and has long black curly hair. Selena has a light complexion. She also has eyebrows that tend to grow together. Selena will be 39 and her child will be 27 in 2023. If you have any information or leads in the disappearance of Selena Mays, her current whereabouts, or any information concerning Selena, it should be directed to your local FBI office, and I've included the link in the show notes, in the Willingboro Police Department at 609-877-2253. I want to thank you for your viewership of Selena's case. Her family is still awaiting answers. We know people don't just vanish. Someone has the answers to this nearly three-decade-long mystery. 
a crime that does not seem random and more targeted to further hold a secret. Hopefully we don't have to go another decade without knowing. I also have a message for Selena. Selena, if you're out there under a completely different identity, I understand. I pray you have reached a level of peace and joy without any restraints. Whatever you dealt with was hard, something no child should have to endure. I pray you are safe. As always, please be safe, be vigilant, and always be aware of your surroundings. May God bless and keep you all. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Romans 12.2